In 1967, the United States government began a secret program called Operation Popeye, which was basically a secret weapon to help them with the Vietnam War. Using some new techniques and some scientific discoveries, they planned to control the weather. What they did was something called cloud seeding. It allowed them to make it rain. Yeah, it rains, and so what? I mean, who really minds whether or not they get wet in a war? But it was more powerful than that. With enough rain, they managed to rain off any protests against the war, and they managed to cause landslides, make roads impassable to trucks, stopping supplies getting to their enemy soldiers. Water has a lot of power, and cloud seeding really turned the whole world into another weapon. Initially, all it was going to be used for was bringing water to places which didn't have any, ending droughts, helping crops to grow, and really just helping places survive. But when you're faced with the ability to control the weather, you can see why the government was very interested in using it. In 1588, the Spanish sent a fleet called the Spanish Armada against England. However, they were only stopped by massive storms that changed the course of European history. The same thing has happened in Japan in the 13th century. Kublai Khan, Mongol warlord and head of the Mongol Empire, tried to capture Japan, but was stopped twice by strong typhoons. The weather is often the difference between being able to survive somewhere and dying. Just ask anyone who's ever tried to capture Moscow. So exactly how do you seed a cloud, as they call it? How do you make it rain? Well, in aid of boosting your military efficiency, I will tell you. Now, the main thing as, is that you've got to cause the water up in the clouds to freeze. Now, it's not just a matter of getting it below zero degrees. Most of the clouds up there are terrifyingly cold, minus 20 degrees often. There's a reason, because the further up you go, the colder it gets. That's why tall mountains always have snowy peaks. So... How do you do it? Well, you can either drop something much colder into the cloud, like dry ice, let's say, that's frozen carbon dioxide. Because once you get water to about minus 40, it will freeze of its own accord. But that's not the best way to do it. The best way is to find something that the water can grab onto and freeze around. These can be pieces of dirt, pieces of soil, something that will make them freeze. And so, how do you do that? Well, you fly a plane above the cloud and drop something into it. I personally recommend silver iodide, as that's what they use around the world. This causes lumps of ice to form in the cloud. The ice then falls out of the cloud, being too heavy to be held up. And it either stays frozen on its way down and falls as snow or hail, or it melts and can become sleet or rain. And bingo! There we go. Now you can see the cloud. So, if this technology is around, is it still being used? The best example of cloud seeding today might be the United Arab Emirates. Recently, scientists created 52 unpredicted rainstorms over the Abu Dhabi desert. At the 2008 Olympic Games, China was using cloud seeding to make sure that rain didn't happen at inopportune moments, and making sure that it was a sunny and good Olympic Games. However, it doesn't always work out so well for them. The weather is more complicated than that. In 2009, Beijing was suffering a drought, and so China decided to use cloud seeding to make it rain and improve the quality of life there. Unfortunately, they ended up just blanketing Beijing in a layer of snow, almost a month earlier than snow was expected. It's a long-standing thing that we all know you can't really predict the weather that well. And we can't do it for the climate too well either, as best we do, and we're getting better at it all the time. We don't know how everything will work, because a small change causes a massive change a few years down the line. And that is the final point I'm going to make about cloud seeding. We, it seems, can make it work. There have been successive tests across lots of Europe, Australia and America and Asia to prove that we can make it work short term, but what is it doing to the climate? Is it going to cause more harm than good in the long run? Should we even risk it? 
Let me know what you think in the comments below, if you really want to. And if you like this stuff, subscribe. Anyway, have a nice day. The eye of the hurricane. A deceiving lull.